Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about the structure of the universe. But actually, we're going to compare the structure of the universe to the structure of something we will have. A brain. Although I'm sure someone in the comments is going to make a joke about this. But anyway, it's actually based on this picture that was trending on Facebook and other social media a few years ago, essentially comparing the structure of our own brain to the structure of the universe. With the picture on the right originally being created by this Virgo consortium that usually produces a lot of um, supercomputer simulations, with a website that for some reason also does this. I could not figure out why it does that though. And the picture on the left, the cross-section of our brain, is something that this wonderful person Mark Miller created a long time ago for his PhD thesis. And he actually has quite a lot of these pictures, more of which you can discover on his account in the description below. And the thing is, back in the days, I think when most of us saw this, a lot of us probably went, wow, that's cool, but you know, how true is this and also what does this all mean? Well, first of all, really quick clarification. This really has nothing to do with consciousness, this has nothing to do with intelligence, and we're not really going to be talking about the idea of intelligent universe or some sort of a higher being somewhere out there. There is absolutely no way for us to prove any of this and we actually have no idea how even our own consciousness is created. So this is sort of beyond the scope of the video, but what we are going to be talking about is the structure. The complexity of different networks, the complexity of structures as they arise from pretty much nothing, and how these structures seem to actually resemble one another even though the size itself is very different. Which is essentially what the scientists who created these images wanted to actually underline as well. And most importantly, someone finally did the science behind all of this and identified several major similarities and also obviously some differences as well between what seems to be the structure in our brain and the structure of the universe. And that's of course the paper you can find in the description as well. And what makes the study particularly interesting is that it was actually an astrophysicist and a neurosurgeon combining their knowledge and combining their expertise to try to create the similarities between the brain and the universe. So it's not just a picture on Facebook, this is actually true science. And all of this of course connects to the idea that there are just a lot of different patterns and a lot of different networks everywhere around us and many of these networks seem to follow a very similar principle, usually mathematical principle, creating very beautiful but also very repetitive patterns that can then be discovered in different domains around us. And by the way, a lot of the imagery I'm using here and also a lot of the simulations is from the amazing Illustrious project that's really good at creating these patterns, recreating our own universe. But once again, let me highlight this again. The morphology or the shape of things does not imply that the function is the same. In other words, just because two things resemble each other, it does not mean that they're going to have the same function. But anyway, let's move on with the similarities. And so interestingly here, we actually know a lot more about the universe than we technically know about the structure and the formation of the structure in the brain. And so in some sense, by studying how all of this is done in the universe, it actually does help us realize how everything forms inside of our brain as well. For example, like you see in this image from Hubble telescope, galaxies tend to actually bunch together into clusters and superclusters. And these clusters usually also have connections between one another, which we normally call cosmic webs. None of this is easily visible, but we know it's there because it's been discovered and rediscovered by many different studies. But we also know that between these clusters, there's usually a lot of empty space. So for example, right here or right here or pretty much everywhere where you don't see anything, which is slightly easier to see in this simulation that shows you the connections and the galaxies and also the voids in between them. And right between the voids and the galaxies, there's actually quite a lot of complexity and a lot of really, really fast moving particles, a lot of really complex matter interaction, and a lot of complex turbulence, usually caused by the gravity itself. But all of this complexity is also to some extent reflected by what we can find inside the brain as well. And even though pictures taken by Mark Miller represent something that's approximately 1 followed by 27 zeros smaller than what you see right here created by the Illustris project, there are very specific similarities that go beyond just the look itself. Now, first of all, today we know that even though there are a lot of different types of matter in the universe, there are even things like dark matter, for the most part, the majority of the universe is made up of what's known as dark energy. At least that's what we believe today based on all of the observations and all of the analysis. We don't really know what it is, but it seems to represent at least 68 or possibly even 
up to 72% of everything in the universe. Okay, well that's interesting, because at the same time, if you were to look inside the brain, as you can see inside this MRI video from Navid Tillman, about 77% of our brain is essentially water. Although in this case, what you're looking at is the so-called cerebrospinal fluid, which also moderates a lot of activity in the brain and is responsible for essentially maintaining a lot of the brain's functionality. And at the same time, another really interesting similarity here is in regards to the flow of information and energy in both systems. So in the brain and in the universe, the flow of energy and the flow of various types of information in both neurons and the universe represents roughly around 25% of the entire mass and energy content of the object. At the same time, when we compare a size of a typical galaxy with the size of the actual galactic filament, or the so-called cosmic web, and then if we also compare the actual size of neurons and neuronal axons, which are these long projections you see, the length proportion seems to be almost identical. In other words, by making the brain about the same size as the universe, a typical neuron would represent a galaxy, and neuronal axon would be long enough to represent the cosmic web. Also, not surprisingly, both the brain and the universe are inside specifically defined networks, which also resemble one another quite a lot, with each of the neurons and each of the galaxies possessing a relatively similar number of connections, surprisingly. So, for example, inside the brain, when looking at approximately 2,000 different nodes, the scientists discovered that each of those nodes was making anywhere between 4.6 and 5.4, or basically average of about 5 different connections. So every neuron was connected to roughly around five other neurons. And then, when looking at the structure of the universe, a very similar pattern emerged. By looking at around 4,000 different nodes, they discovered an average of about four connections. So maybe a little bit less than the brain, but very similar, four versus five. And what's more is that both structures have a preference for clustering a lot of things around some sort of a central node. So basically what we would call a cluster of galaxies seems to also exist in the brain, although unfortunately it's very difficult to find good pictures of this. Once again, if you would like to see more, check out Mark Miller's Flickr page because it does have some of the best imagery I've found so far. And then we come to the question of numbers. So the estimates right now suggest that there are approximately 70 billion different neurons in our brain. And the previous numbers for the number of galaxies in the observable universe was anywhere from 100 to 400 billion, although today we think it's much, much higher possibly even 4 trillion. So in that sense, the numbers for galaxies, at least in the observable universe, seems to be higher. But at the same time, we're just talking about the observable universe and we don't really know the true numbers in the entire universe. As a matter of fact, we probably never will. And so in that sense, knowing that the number of neurons is not so far off from the number of galaxies in the observable universe is also extremely unusual. Although unusual is maybe not the right word. Mind-blowing is a much better word. Also, interestingly, about 75% of everything in the brain and in the universe is made out of passive materials that don't seem to influence things as much. They do have certain fluctuations that influence the bigger scale of things, but both structures seem to possess something, either different types of gas motion, for example, in the universe, or different types of neuronal signals in the brain. And in this case, when scientists looked at approximately one micrometer of neuronal tissue and compared it to about 5 million light years, of galaxies, the actual fluctuations and activity was extremely similar in morphology. In other words, even the passive activity and a lot of different motion was somewhat similar to one another. And then there's also the question of information. For example, we know today that our brain can, hypothetically at least, store about two and a half petabytes of information, which is about two and a half thousand terabytes. And when it comes to the complexity of connections inside the universe, if we were to apply a similar principle here, the total information in the visible universe would be about 4.5 petabytes. So just a little bit more, but not a lot more. Although here we're just talking about the possible connections between things, and not the true formation of memory, for example, not the true formation of information. Here we're just talking about links between different nodes. But just like I mentioned before, it's still very, very easy to make a wrong conclusion here. The brain structure does not mean that the universe is also aware or that the universe has consciousness. This study only explains one thing. It seems that structures, especially very large structures, 
follow exactly the same rules when it comes to formation and networking. The complexity and the self-organization inside of these structures create pretty much similar ideas and similar results. Which of course doesn't really help us answer the question of consciousness at all. It just helps us, well, not really much as a matter of fact. It does help us understand how maybe complex AI networks could form and how we could maybe create some sort of a really complex computer simulation, but in this case it does not help us in any other way other than just seeing something similar in terms of morphology or how things look. Nevertheless, I personally found it to be a pretty cool analysis and the paper and all of the relevant links are, as always, in the description below. But on that note, that's kind of all I wanted to mention. It's pretty awesome that we are finding these links and networks and all of these different connections pretty much everywhere around us, but it's also not surprising because these mathematical patterns do repeat themselves even if you look at something really microscopic or if you look at something really, really huge. That, in essence, is the math at work. Check out all of the papers and all of the links in the description below and also check out the work by Mark Miller or by any of the other scientists I mentioned in this video. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt, which by the way, because of the Black Friday, is also on sale. So check it out in the description below. Either way, I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.